Okay, in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to install a plugin and use it in our website. The plugin that we are going to work with today, and I would like you to install into your site, is called Table Press. However, before we jump into that, let me point out to you, I'm looking at WordPress.org. And if you come over here to WordPress.org, Again, I'd already explained that there's a bunch of content here. This is the site that hosts and pushes out the WordPress software itself. In here, there are a ton of different themes that you can get to. All of this is available in your particular installation of WordPress. The difference here is that you can browse things a little bit more easily in terms of taking a look through and, and getting um, screenshots and looking at the various options here. In addition to that here, we're going to be exploring today plugins and I just want to show you that um, you know currently uh, WordPress has about 31,000 available plugins. Now developers of plugins and themes could actually host these and never register them with WordPress.org, so there may be even many more out there. But just so you know, for example, you know, there are 4,000 plugins that deal with widgets, 2,000 that deal with admin stuff. Um, there's a ton of plugins out there that are a lot of um, fun. Many, many of them are free, not all, but many of them are, and um, they are certainly a lot of um, options to enhance your particular uh, pieces. Now understand that where plugins come from our developers will put these together and put them out there. Some plugins are going to be uh, continually updated and some plugins are going to be uh, once and done where the author has done it one time and has moved on and doesn't bother to update it again. The, the challenge with plugins as with themes is that as WordPress itself gets updated, you really need to run updates on your plugins, you need to run updates on your themes, if applicable. Understanding that if WordPress comes out with a different software package and these plugins are not updated to work with it, in fact, the plugin may not work. And to even get scarier, sometimes these plugins will take down your entire website. I do have a little tutorial on how to uh, deal with a web uh, web plugin that uh, hurts your website and or creates a problem, but we're going to use that in a different tutorial at a later point. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about installing uh, TablePress, which is the plugin that I'd like to deal with today. So um, over here on the left hand side, we have um, an option to go to plugins, and we can see that the uh, plugins that are already sitting here in our site is um, are, are already installed, right? Um, this Hello Dolly is just a really kind of funny kind of thing. Uh, if you read the description, not a plugin, symbolizes hope. You'll see it popping up here in the upper right hand corner of your particular site. Can you delete it? Sure. Um, but that's just one of those little um, things that they have installed in WordPress. So you can um, Disable it if you want to, and that's true of any of your little plugins here. Um, I would not disable the Mojo Marketplace. That's where we go to get other um, WordPress content <clears throat> in addition to the one we've got going here. It probably wouldn't matter here at this level because we are already into the WordPress. Mojo Marketplace, for the most part, helps us install a new WordPress. So once you went to install another WordPress, you would use Mojo Marketplace, but from within this particular WordPress, you probably wouldn't use it to install another one. So um, just understanding what that is, but I would not deactivate or delete it here, okay? Um, so let's go to plugins here. Uh, a couple of little ad kinds of things I can get rid of. I can just close those down simply because I don't want to uh, read them anymore. Um, so let's go up here to where it says plugins, add new. Now I happen to know uh, the name of this, which is um, Table Press, and I'm going to go ahead and search it. 
and here it is. What this allows me to do is put in a searchable table. Now, obviously, there are tons of other kinds of things that come in here as well, but this is the one I want. Um, I can uh, click on details and take a look at the content here, and what this is uh, uh, all about is the details of it. So this is important. Um, for example, you want to make sure that the plugin you're using uh, is going to be compatible with the software version you're running. You can find that off of your dashboard. Notice of what it's required to have. So once again, um, you have to pay attention to whether or not these plugins will work for um, um, you in your installation. Um, down here in the lower right is an install now or alternately we could have just done it right from this screen here and click on install now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to say are you sure? Click OK. Remember that some of these plugins can absolutely pull down your entire site in a heartbeat. Again I will talk to you how to uh, rectify that at a later point. Once this is uh, installed here, it's going to talk about what it's doing and whether it's successfully installed or not. And then I know that this happens to be a good plugin, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Activate Plugin. And what that then does is that pulls it into my website and makes it available to me over here on the left hand side. Now, you have to read about the plugin because not all of them will actually produce a menu over here on the left hand side some of them will produce additional options off of your uh, current menus, right? So that you may have some options that um, are, are going to add functionality to existing menus. TablePress adds its own new um, menu. Notice here under uh, TablePress that we've got some options across the top here. We've got uh, obviously looking at all tables, adding new. We can get fancy in terms of importing and exporting data in CSV files. We can also get fancy in terms of um, adding extra uh, cascading style rules to make it look different. Um, here are the things that you need to know. It tells you right here to insert a table into a page, post, or text widget, copy its short code and paste it at the desired place in the editor. I'm going to go through that with you here momentarily. Um, but every table is going to generate a short code, and that short code is going to have to be popped into a page. Let's go ahead and start by adding a new piece. And this is what I'm going to be asking you to do this week is add a new um, table press widget so to speak, to your site. And I am going to um, gonna call this links educational. Now, the name of this table does not appear in your site anywhere. This is just an organizational piece to help you know what table is doing what. Um, it defaults with number of rows and number of columns. I'm going to push this to two, although you can certainly add more rows and columns later on, so no big deal there. I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Table. Now, um, here's the first thing. I can see that the short code is sitting up there. We'll get back to that in a minute, right? Um, you can drag and drop rows and columns via the row number, yada, yada. That's fine. The thing to know here is that this first one, notice that it's highlighted in a different color. Um, I'm going to actually use this little handy um, corner bracket, so to speak, to expand those out. This uh, this piece that's in blue is actually your table header and where that's governed yeah it's right here is uh, table head row the first row of the table is the table header I always like to make uh, a header across the top of my table so that um, uh, people can know what they're sorting right so that's why this is indicated if I wanted that to be the last row I could do it uh, by clicking here also too, these are alternating row colors um, highlight pieces um, there's all sorts of little options down here we can add our own CSS style right from here uh, we can get into some very fancy kinds of things here um, but I'm going to go ahead and type in here um, So here is um, a sample of <clears throat> how I start up my particular table. And I'm just going to do one. Um, and for the sake of um, sample, 
I'm going to actually just pull this, the fact that I've got this uh, WordPress site already open. I'm going to type in WordPress plugin, plugin, right? Um, and over here in this particular box, I want it to be an actual hyperlink. How do you get a hyperlink into the table press area? There's a couple different ways to do it. But over here under the uh, table manipulation block, there's an insert link. Pop up comes up one time that says, please click into the cell that you want to add the link into. Click OK on that. So I'm going to click into this cell because I've clicked on link. And now it's going to allow me to paste the link. I can also force it to go out to a, a different website or excuse me, a different window. I could also pull in my own particular content if I wanted to, as opposed to uh, an, uh, an external site. I'm going to go ahead and click on add link. And that's all there is to setting up uh, the table. You can go ahead and um, pull in uh, obviously more rows down here. You can pull in more columns. You can delete columns, delete rows, etc. For our instruction, I'm going to click uh, on Save Changes because that's now done. I'm going to come back up here and here's what we need to now do. There's a couple different places to get this short code, but this is basically something I must use now. I'm going to copy that. I've highlighted it and copied it. It's up here as well, right? And it again tells you that you have to paste it at the desired place in the editor. So I've got my table ready to go. I'm going to come back over here to my pages. Seriously? Okay. Um, here I've got a web page ready to go and I'm calling this links. Now I tend to label my web pages um, in this fashion. For example, in order for me to get all of my pages that have hyperlinks, these are resources together, I might start with the word links colon and then name it. I might start with the word resources colon. It just helps me visualize in terms of where uh, I've got everything placed in all of my page codes. Some of our pages and sites will get into tons of different um, uh, pages and so Organizing is probably very important. Okay, so here's uh, the thing. Let's remember that the visual part just simply pastes content. That's not what we want to do here. We are actually pasting a bit of code. So we're going to come over here to our text editor and we're going to paste it right there. Note that this is different from this particular table up here. This table will generate a, uh, an actual HTML. Oops, never mind inserts a table from table press. So it, it would allow you to generate the table right in there, but we don't need to do it because we know how to use it through the short code. So we've pasted the short code right here in terms of our text. I can pop back to visual. Um, it doesn't show me an awful lot right now because this is not where I edit my table, right? Um, however, if I pop out and view the page, here it is. Now, it doesn't really work with my particular theme of dark and stuff like that. Um, in terms of like um, redoing these um, for visual pieces, that's where you would want to get involved in playing around with the CSS on these, and etc. Um, and anytime that you have a problem with a table, you can always go back. Here's the table. You can just go ahead and click on show the short code if that's all you need. What's also nice about this is you can export it. So if you want to make a backup of that table or move it to another site, you can do that as well. Um, ah, okay. So here's, here's a problem that I just noticed. I totally blew this one. Let me show you what I did wrong. Well, that's not going to work. Hold on one second. I'm going to come back here to Pages. I'm going to uh, go to links and I'm going to, um, I'm going to right click and, and open that in a new tab. That way I can see what it looks like. Notice over here what I noticed earlier was the actual web address isn't showing up. Hmm, that's not what I wanted. Um, so let me pop back here to <clears throat> my table editor. Oops, that's not it. And that's not it. Okay, so. Let's come back to table press, all tables, and I will show you what I did wrong. Here it is. So what I can see here is this, especially once I expand this out. Here 
is the actual HTML code that inserts that um, web URL. Notice that there's nothing that appears. There's no words that appear in between the opening tag and the closing tag there, right? So how would I have gotten that in there correctly in the first place? I can certainly go in here and uh, type it directly in here. That would, that would take care of the problem. But let me show you what I should have done in the first place. I'm going to click on the Insert Link. This little pop-up doesn't come up every time. It only comes up one time uh, when you're doing this work. So click in there, go ahead and paste it. Now I needed to add um, the text. In this case I'm going to add the same exact URL because I want the user to see the web address. I could have added, um, for example, you know, words here if I wanted to and that's the way it would have appeared. The, uh, the text would have been words and it would have hyperlinked to that address but I really want to repeat the hyperlink etc. Click on add link. Now notice that it's actually sitting inside um, my uh, HTML tag sandwich. I'm going to click on save changes and I'm going to come back out here. I'm going to reload this <clears throat> and indeed there it is. That's what I was expecting to see so that our users could click on that and indeed there they go. So what you need to do is you need to set up table press and go ahead create a page to insert the short code, create a new table and have four or five different types of things in there that you would like to use as uh, hyperlinks for education or perhaps your own design resources. Note that what's really cool about this of course is that once you build up all of these uh, resources you can sort them um, and your, in, your end users can sort them, your end users can search for them, um, your end users can determine how many site entries they want to take a look at at one particular time. Um, let me just show you in terms of um, what I've got going here. This is our true in, uh, instructional site, so I've got different kinds of things coming up here. Notice that they're um, coming in in terms of the different um, times that I've added them. So they're, they're posting as I've added them, not in alphabetical order. And notice that I've also goofed here. Notice that I put a site into my header. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Um, so I would expect here that this header would not float, which is really what I wanted to do. But I'm going to go ahead and sort that and it will resort. Now notice that I've got some extras in there. I'd have to go back and clean that up as well in order to um, take care of that. Here's a, here's a better one. Um, appropriately in my first line I've got the word name and I've got in this case type, right? Here I've added the hyperlink directly to the name of the content. Once again these are not in alpha order, they are in uh, chronological order as I type them in, although if I were to sort my table press before I saved it then it would appear the way I, I saved it last but I can certainly um, uh, go ahead and sort them here. So that's it for table press. Go ahead and get your pieces started and I'll talk to you soon.